So today I thought I'd talk about how perspective matters in the software development process. Uh, I was having a chat with my buddy, Danny, and uh, we were talking software, as we often do. <clears throat> and it's interesting, you know, when you start looking at, well, you know, why didn't they design Android Auto a certain way, right? There's all kinds of things, by the way, in Android Auto, they're just perplexing to me. Uh, one thing is get a new phone and maybe, maybe not get your unlocks and all that with the new phone. Why? Why would, why can't you just take the settings from the old phone and transfer them to the new phone like a normal person? It takes 10 seconds. I can tell you why. Requires design. It requires design. You have to think about that before you write your code. If you try to think about it after you write your code, you might write your code in a way that your settings can't be used on a different phone. There are ways to do that. In fact, that's the default way. If you just get lazy in your programming, and I'll call it lazy, uh, then your settings won't work. They won't work at all on different devices. Lots of software has this problem. Why? Why does software have the problem? Well, here's why. Perspective. That's why. Software engineer, trying to get code written. Want to do settings? OK, I'm going to set up my settings. Just put a settings file in, boom. What most software projects used to do, I don't know how, how it is nowadays, I haven't, I haven't had to dig into software recently, all the settings of any kind were set up in like a single file, you know, or the configuration was spread out throughout the code in the equivalent of pound defines, right, or global variables. And so either you'd read in a, a config file or it was coded right into the code, right into the source code, and you'd tweak and change things. And the problem is, Roughly speaking, in software, there's three types of settings that you care about. You care about settings that affect the running of the software, right, from a software perspective. So how big your buffers are, uh, how many elements you're keeping track of, right, because efficiency matters. You don't want to make it open-ended, right? Um, things like number of threads, right, timing on processes. Those are all internal, like, run-based settings. There's another set of settings. There's nothing to do with the software per se, but it has to do with the configuration of the software at runtime. That's totally different. I understand there's some bleed through from the first category to the second category, but by and large, these are settings like host names. What host name am I running on? Or what host name do I respond to? It's actually important to set that because it's security concern. For one thing, ah, got you there, right? It also can help your software to run better. Why? Because when you think of this as an item that gets passed in from a configuration file, the way you design, develop, and write your code changes completely. And that's actually really important. So making that decision is that division rather is important in decision making when coding. And the third type are basically uh, settings that have to do with the user and the individual instance that's running. So if it's multi-tenant software, it would just be the user, like, well, whatever whatever user's coming in, want to keep track of their preferences, their cookies, their whatever, doesn't matter, there's a ton of stuff. And session data, right? All of that is, is, is stuff that is runtime tied to the user, not runtime tied to the connection between the infrastructure and the software, like hostname is, hostname is infrastructure, software, how do they communicate? Which backend databases do you use? Which host names are you answering on under, right? Things like that really helps in testing, really helps to keep your developers out of your production environment where they'll do nothing but cause trouble. Um, this third type is just user-based. So there's a user layer. Well, why does this matter? That perspective matters a lot. So here's what happened to me years ago. My first uh, AWS deployment was years and years and years ago. AWS is brandy new. <clears throat> I had the um, CTO hired me for a Boston development office, which was very chic at the time. And um, I said, yo, what, what do you need me to do? And he said, you set up whatever you want to set up, whatever way you want to set it up. If anybody gives you any trouble, just come to me. And I was like, really? Oh, I'll build whatever I want. Fantastic. So I go learn AWS. It doesn't take long. It takes like a week figure out what, what we're doing with our software while I'm learning AWS. I'm like, okay, I see single pane of glass, bunch of services on the back. I'm going to run everything in the cloud using this, uh, I forget what the framework was, but it was Yahoo framework, actually. It was a Yahoo uh, uh, backend PHP framework. And, you know, 
I'm doing this automated development deployment long before DevOps. This is when DevOps was new, but like I'd been doing this for 10 plus years before DevOps was even a, a thing. And checking in all my infrastructure code because infrastructure as code is not new. We were doing that back in the 90s. Sorry to tell you. Um, there might have been some people doing it in the 80s, in fact, because um, I learned it somewhere. So um, it took about 10 minutes to do a release. And fully automating the release was a little tricky because the software engineers were checking in the config file. The problem with checking in your config file is that if you check in the config file in the final position and under the final name that it belongs, it's a little difficult to deal with because it gets overwritten every time you do a deployment or a release, right? Deployments are sub subtypes of releases. <clears throat> so you deploy into QA, you release to production. That's typically the way I divide it up just to just to do DevOps and release engineering correctly. It's important to understand the difference between deployment and release. So one day I go to one of the engineers and I said, hey, can we split out the configurations that are involved in infrastructure from this configuration file? He said, no. And I was like, what? And I never had any problems before that. I could have gone to the CTO and said, the guy said no to me. But instead, because I'm wicked smart, I said, um, do you have like 10 minutes? And he goes, yeah. And I said, come over to my desk for a second. And he comes over to the desk. And I said, I'm just going to do a quick QA release on your code. So I did the release process. And I went in and edited the file and changed the host names and spun it up. And he didn't say a word. He went back to his desk. 15 minutes later, there was a new configuration file <laughs> constructed. He wasn't the senior engineer, by the way, which is the funny part. Uh, he was the young guns engineer that did all the actual work, who was very, very bright. And what he did was he split out all the configuration stuff that I had to change to do a QA release, which also, or QA deployment, which also affects the release, right? And put it in a file, moved his, compile to, his config file to a new name, because that one is under the control of the developers. The other one is under the control of the infrastructure guys, me, the DevOps people. And then um, what happened was I had those files so that what would happen is they stayed the same on those machines. So when you spin up a QA machine, it got a QA configuration file every single time. And because it had a QA configuration file and it didn't get overwritten by the deployment anymore because that wasn't checked in, the, those, there was a template file with the template example name in it that was checked in. That's actually important because now you could take that template file and compare it to the previous template file or compare it to the config file and just take out the key value pair stuff that you don't care about the changes and see if there's a difference. And if there is a difference, then you know that your release has to include a manual process usually for updating the configuration file. Now you can automate your deployments completely. And uh, yeah, now the deployment became a single click of a button, all because the engineer separated out a few config file items that were tied up with both the infrastructure and uh, the internal running of the program. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Why did they make it that way? Perspective. They're trying to get code out quickly. They just need one config file, contains all the information. They're just running it in their dev environment. They don't think about QA or production. I mean, this is a, a new project, so we didn't we didn't have production environment at that point. Um, so yeah, they, they didn't have the perspective. But this bleeds out everywhere. You know what else they don't have the perspective on? How the users are using the software. Software engineers generally have an idea of how they think the software is going to be used, and it's almost always wrong. Why? Because they're one person with one perspective. And people who use software users, there's usually many more users than there are software engineers. This actually matters. The way they find to use your software is different from the way you intended it to be used. Most engineers get pissed off when they find that out. Why? Because you're destroying their worldview. You're saying your perspective on the world is wrong. We're not going to use the software that way. And they're like, we put all the time, energy, and effort to designing it this way. And oh, it's how it's supposed to be used. Blah, right? So they tend to get very upset. Not all of them, but it's a big tendency. So 
you can see the way in which perspective matters, right? And and how tied up we are in it. And a lot of people refer to this perspective as identity. I think that's wrong. Perspective informs identity. Identity is not perspective, <laughs> right? So knowing this is kind of important, especially in software engineering, because you have to understand the person using the software, what are they doing with it? Why are they looking at it the way they're looking at it? What things do they see in the usage that I don't see as an engineer? This is all important. What is the perspective of the release engineer? How can I make the release process easier? How do I make deployments more automatable? All of this stuff matters when you design software. And that's why perspective matters. And that's perspective in software development.